now that I've got a surface created, let's see. Well, let's actually get some data out of this thing. So I'm going to hit escape a time or two. You'll notice that whenever I hover over something, I get dual little boxes over my cursor. That's because I have selection cycling on. Selection cycling is controlled by control W. If I hit control W, you'll see that it turns selection cycling off. If I hit it again, it turns it back on. What that means is that if I hover over an object, and like in this case here, let's go right here. Right here, you can see that I have a block, I've got a contour line, and I've got one of these, um, what's going to be like a transverse line, or in this case, I'm going to use them as break lines. If I hover over them with that turned on, you'll notice that the little icon shows up. Now if I click here, it's going to say, hey man, you're over a tin surface, a block reference, a couple of lines, or you can say nothing. If I wanted to pick just the tin surface, I could pick that. The block, you, you'll notice the black highlights, and then the line segments will light up. And to my hover those over those as well. Kind of a neat little toy, especially for picking things that I'd like to manipulate, especially in dense areas like this where you've got more than one. But of course, if you just want to guess and pick the topmost thing, hit Control W. Now, when you pick whatever the topmost thing is, will get picked, even if you're trying to pick the ones below. So I like selection cycling. It's a little bit annoying during a normal process, but when you're dealing with multiple things, it's great. Now that I've got myself a surface, let's see if we can see what it looks like. I'm going to just draw a simple, let's draw a simple ball line. So I'm going to put a point here, and a point here, and a point here just for fun. Now if I just want to get a quick and dirty kind of look at my surface, just to see if it's looking the way I expect. If I highlight that new polyline that I just drew, right click and give it a the option for a quick profile here. If I right click and go to quick profile, what that'll do is it'll say, hey, I found a surface here called block. I'm going to use the existing profile style or the profile style of existing ground using this major grids. Let's change it to just plain major grids, no HGP. Say OK and click over here to the right. What that does is it gives me a 10 to 1 exaggerated picture, but I can see that I've got a little, uh, let's make it a little bit smaller. I've got a 10 to 1 exaggeration of this here going up the face of this thing and then down the back of it just a little bit, but here's the crest and you can see right here where that little flat spot is, there's a little bump of my road and another little bench right there. Let's take this, since it is such an exaggerated Z and I've already got plenty of height, let's edit the profile view style on the profile view style editor let's go to graph that's where the vertical exaggeration is and we'll take out the 10 and just make it one when we do that now we've got something that looks a little more like what we'd expect here's a nice gentle slope here's a road with a little bit of a ditch and then here's a little tiny bench right here that gives us kind of an example of that the interesting thing about quick profiles is that they're temporary so if I go up here to save this, so I'm going to save as, this was surface 2, but I'm going to make project 2 out of it. If I go here and give this a name, project 2, project 2, there we are, and say OK, save. As soon as I save this thing here, you'll notice that my preview, my quick profile disappeared. We can't necessarily use quick profiles, there's a way to make it stick around. But really, for what it is, it's just temporary, so we can kind of get a rough idea of what we're looking at. If we want a real profile, we should make an alignment out of it. In this case, if I did want to make an alignment out of this, I would like to go up here and use my favorite alignment from object. So I was saying that I wanted to keep that for a reason. I'm not sure what it would be, but a reason. I'm going to click on that, say OK. My arrow is going down. If I want it to go that way, good. If not, I'd hit R at this time, though I can reverse it later on. In this case here, I'm just going to call this one here, uh, Face of Dam, for a simple name. I'm going to let it be for proposed. I'm going to go here, Major and Minor Only, and then I'm going to let it add a curve for me, but I'm going to put a 50-foot curve in instead of 200, and then I'm going to have it erase that original line I put in and just leave the alignment there. Say OK. There we go. 0 to 178. Now that it's in alignment, I can of course take it and drag it wherever I want. 
though I could have when it was temporary as well. Let's go here and grab the PI of it. And we'll stretch that out to there. Why? No reason. Just to change it a little bit. Now that I've got an alignment on my surface, let's see what it looks like. Instead of building a temporary profile, let's build a permanent one. So I'm going to go here to create a surface profile. In here i got face of dam and block. Right now it's going to cover the entire length. I'm going to add those together. Click dry in profile view. All of my defaults are adequate. So it just tells me what I'm using. Oops. I lied. It is not adequate. Let's use major grids. Profile view style. And if we look at profile view style at this point, it should be set to the one that I just changed as. That change I made, even though it wasn't a temporary uh, quick profile, the change I made was to the style, and the style is for the drawing as a whole. So it's still set to that. If I do that, station range auto, profile view height, automatic. I look in here sometimes to see if there's going to be a spike. If the maximum is well over what I expect, then I know there's some sort of wrong piece. And if the minimum is something super tiny or zero, that way I know I'm going to the wrong elevation. Uh, for the profile display options, I only have the one surface. We're going to put two into this one. And for data bands, we don't need any right now. Profile hatch options, again, we're not using. Let's create a profile view. Now if I click over here, it generates a profile view. It's going the other way because my um, previous one, my quick profile, was only going in the direction of which I drew. This one goes in the direction of however I want to set my alignment. But if we look at it, it's showing us the same picture. So to modify this surface, if I would like, if I wanted to, in here I've got a couple blue lines. If I right click and say select similar after picking one, I can see that I have all these lines here. These blue lines are a break line of some sort, or I'm going to use them as a break line to modify this surface. Doing that, let's go to the surface, right click on break lines, add, and in this case here, we'll just do a damn face. Standard is what we'd like to use because they're sitting at the right elevation. Proximity would be if those break lines were at zero. Wall gives us a vertical of some sort. From file would mean that someone has them in a file that we're just going to load without actually putting them in the drawing. And non-destructive, I don't quite understand this one because it wouldn't change the way the tin is being created. And I thought that was a point of break lines. In this case, I would like to supplement my break lines. And I'd like to supplement them with a distance of 5. That way I get a little bit more points because my break lines are pretty large. At least for distance, for how many points are in them. I'm going to say OK. And then, since I know it's only going to pick lines, I can do a crossing. Get all of those. And get all of these. I may zoom in and get a few more. I want to make sure to get all the ones that are touching where my actual lines are. Uh oh. I have a weird conflict here. Hopefully they're at about the same elevation, or we're about to get something very strange. There we go. Pick those. You can see them highlighting underneath there. And I'm going to pick these two and those. So now we've highlighted all the lines in this relative area. Not too bad. So hopefully we'll get some kind of change out of these contours when I hit enter. Hmm. We got a weird change. Got all kinds of little bumpy spikes and stuff in there. We may have to go back and see what's up with those extra lines that I wasn't counting on. But what that's done is, now if we look at our surface, sometimes it cleans it up, sometimes it roughs it up a little bit. So now my road has like a, a bump in it, which it didn't have before, but that's alright. But now it's defined it a little bit more on those break lines. So maybe not the best example, but I should maybe change that just a little bit. Put this into a 3D view, but now we can see that. Aha! That red brake line does do something strange. <laughs> Look at that, the red brake line brought it up over this point. Instead of the blue breaking it where I thought it would, the red kind of added to it. The nice thing is, since brake lines do get added, we can see where the, the 5 foot that I told them to add at. 
That's what these distances are between the triangles. If I want to, though, I can go over here to break lines. On the bottom left, there's a description. And the description shows us that the break lines called dam faces are put in there. I am going to delete that one. Say OK. Now it takes it out of my surface. We can see the surface is now out of date, but my break lines are still being reflected in the tin. That's because, since it's out of date, it was this last regen. I, in this case, I'll have to go and tell it to rebuild. When it rebuilds, it goes back to where it was. And now I can try it again. This time, however, let's go here and freeze the layer those red ones are on. There we go. Got the red ones frozen. Now that the red ones frozen, let's go back ahead and add these blue ones back to my surface. So now that I'm in a 3D view, I can see my alignment's way down here. And my surface is up here. I'm going to rotate this just a bit so I can get a pretty good grasp on these. Go back to break lines, add some more. Call them blue damn face. There we go. We keep it as standard. We'll supplement as well. Fives are fine. Say OK. And this time, I'm going to add all of these. Or at least as many as I feel like grabbing with my crossing. I pretty much got all the ones across the face of this. Yeah, looks about like what I want. Anytime I highlight one, anything that's actually picking will highlight through this uh, surface so we can see it. Even if the gray line of the surface is sitting on top of it. Or the tin line, I should say. At this point, we're good. Hit enter. Now I get a whole bunch of crisp lines across the face of my dam. Let's see if this improved my profile any. Play and enter, enter. Go back and look at the profile. Eh, I've still got a little dip in my road, but for the most part, it doesn't look drastically different. But now I know it's paying attention to these brake lines I have in here. And the brake lines again are still causing some interesting little tugs across there. I think if I keep it from those tugs look pretty consistent, right? Pretty much at every point that I have in the drawing. So basically it's doing some sort of strange interference there. Let's try one more thing. Let's delete those guys out one more time. This time I'm going to add break lines. And I'm going to say all oh, blue face again. Keep it in the standard, but this time I'm not going to supplement them at all. If there isn't a point in the break line, it's not going to take it. I'm going to grab all these. You can see that's about the same ones I had last time. Hit enter. The surface didn't change because I hadn't rebuilt it from the previous time, but if I do rebuild it now, let's see what our results are. There we go. That helps take out all the little spikes I have. My surface profile looks pretty good, and honestly, my road actually looks a little bit nicer. Doesn't have that crazy bump in it. Looks a little flatter, like I expected it to be. So not too shabby. Now that we got that, we may go check out another portion of this surface.